happy to have someone back with us this morning. Someone who is not a friend, but a family of this house. So would you all please join me in welcoming back. We've had a great time Thursday, great time Friday, great time Saturday, Bishop Joshua. Amen. Wonderful. Let's pray. Jesus, we are grateful to be here in your house, the place where your glory dwells, the place where we find you and hear your voice. Uh, just lift your hands and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you really quickly. Oh Lord, we've come to hear from you, the place where we can find you and know you. Interrupt us, Lord, interrupt our plans and um, let your will be done. Just speak in the spirit if you can, just pray in tongues for a few moments. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Teach us and speak to us. In Jesus' name. Obra David, Debra Sim Padamris. Molo Dobro Sim Pedebris. Bolo Dombro Samba Dive Debris, Sango Dive Nebris, Sambos. You're worthy of it all, Lord. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve our glory and our praise and our adoration. It's an honor to be in your presence, Lord, to come close to you. Thank you for your love and your faithfulness and your kindness to all of us, to bring us into your house. We were excited when they said to us, let's go to the house of God. How we love your tabernacle and the place where your glory dwells. How we love to come to hear your word. How we love to come to see you, to worship, to love you. We ask for your blood to wash us and to cleanse us and to bring us to the place where we can know you. For this is the purpose of man, to know you and to be intimate with you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Um, what a blessing to be here. Um, my wife and I and our church family are so uh, blessed to be connected to you. Um, you know, I, I spoke to my dad yesterday and he was sending his love and his prayers um, to the whole church, to Pastor David, Sister Bev and the family and the whole COP family. And uh, we're blessed to be connected. And I, I believe the Holy Spirit brought us together. And it's been a blessing. And just coming here feels more and more like we're just at home. Amen. So thank you all for having us. We love you so much. And it's always an honor to be here. Amen. Ooh, are you there? All right. Well, oh, there's some happiness at the back somewhere. Oh, upstairs. Hi. Oh, okay. I think I like you guys better. <laughs> Amen. Right. Um, well, we've been talking about the quiet time. Let's look at Exodus chapter 24. And yes, last night with the other service, I began, or we began looking at what happens when you have your quiet time. Uh, Exodus chapter 24, verse 1. It says, And the Lord said to Moses, Come up to the Lord. Come to God, you and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and worship from afar off. Amen. And in verse 2 it says, uh, But Moses alone shall come near the Lord and they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. Amen. Everyone say, Worship from afar. And then everyone say, Come near the Lord. So when you look at in verse 1, you see Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 elders. That's 73 people. We're only allowed to worship God from far. But you and I want what Moses had, where we can come near to God and be alone with him. It says, and Moses alone, verse 2, Moses alone shall come near the Lord. Amen. And I've, uh, we've been looking this whole weekend at spending time alone with the Lord. Amen. And I want to encourage you in your walk with God. Your whole life changes when you come close to the Lord. Amen. 
and um, l- yesterday we spoke about how you build um, the most important relationship for your life when you spend time alone with the Lord. You can only get to know someone when you're alone with them. The deepest connections can only happen when you're alone. And um, God wants you to be deep with Him. God wants to know you intimately and personally. Uh, and you do that by coming to Him and coming alone. And today I want to share with you on the next thing that happens when you are alone with the Lord. Now, when you have your quiet time or you have time alone with God or you enter the secret place to be alone with the Lord, uh, you develop the most important personal habit of all time, which is a regular time with your Creator. Now, going to God... Uh, is not supposed to be an event. Going to God is supposed to be a habit. Your life has events and your life has habits. When I was in law school, I used to go to lectures. I was supposed to go to lectures in law school. Um, Every day, it was an event. It lasted for three, four, five years. And it was over. That's an event. Spending time with God is not an event. In church, we have events. This weekend is our Harvest Conference. Our theme is awe. Woo! Right? Okay. Woo! Okay, good. But next week, we have church again. Events come and go. Habits stay. Every morning when you wake up, you know, in Mark 135, Jesus gives us the pattern. Every day you wake up, you go alone. The Bible says he woke up before the sun rose. And you go alone to a place where no one else is, a solitary place. Give me this in ESV. In the morning, you wake up a long time before, while it's still dark, the ESV says. And you go out to a solitary place where no one else is. And there you spend time praying. You spend time reading the Bible. You ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. You ask the Holy Spirit to tell you what he wants you to do. You ask him to reveal himself to you. And you spend an hour praying and worshiping and reading the Bible and writing down things you feel the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. You do that every day. It's the most important habit. Look, rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed. And he went out to a desolate place and there he prayed. It's not supposed to be something that happens sometimes. It's supposed to become a habit. I believe in waiting on God. Now, I also believe in going away to spend time with God. I believe a Christian should have a couple of times a year, maybe once or twice or three times a year, where you go away from everyone else and you spend three days alone praying and reading God's word and and getting to know the Lord and connecting to God. I believe in that. But that is an event. That's not a habit. A habit is a daily, frequent, you, you don't miss a day spending time with God. I would say, I would prefer for you to spend 30 minutes every day with God than to spend a week every month praying somewhere to God. A daily habit is more powerful than an event. Yes. If you're trying trying to build muscle and you go to the gym and you do one day where you really tear all your muscles out and that's all you do for the rest of the year, you're not going to have any muscles. But if you spend just half an hour every single day lifting weights, You're going to develop muscles because habits will always be more powerful than events. Some Luke 5, verse 16, if you can give it to me in the Amplified. It says, Jesus himself would often, often slip away. He would often slip away. I like the word slip away. If you have the Amplified. It says he would often slip away to the wilderness and pray in seclusion. Often, he slips away, he escapes. Often, 
This is the secret. This is, you know, I, I, when I was in, in uh, secondary school, there was a guy. He was our friend. He was, he was one of us. But, you know, at night when we went to bed, he would go off to the common room to go and study alone. And he used to do better than all of us in school because he would play around with us, he would chat with us, he would eat with us, but then later he would slip away. Jesus himself would often slip away into the wilderness. You know, I came, I came here with a lot of people from my church in Ghana. It takes, about, it takes about 18 hours to fly here. I came also with some of our church, uh, our church family from England. It also takes probably another 18 hours to get here. We came here with some of our church family from Australia. It takes about five hours for them to get here. And we've had a great time together. Apart from um, just coming to the conference, we've learned so much from your pastors and from, from Pastor Shah and from uh, the different pastors we've, we've been able to interact with. And we've also had times where we had meals together. We've had times talking together. But amongst us, some of us have been sleeping away. Now, maybe, maybe not everybody. Maybe some of them only see God in events. But there are some of us who have the habit. It doesn't matter whether we're in a crowd in Manila. It doesn't matter whether we are with people or we're not with people. We have the habit. Some of them can't, they can't even clap because they've not been sleeping away. They've been sleeping away. While some of us have been sleeping away. They've been eating away. While some of us have been sleeping away. But he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, he abides under the shadow of the Almighty. I, I can't, you know, when people say, oh, you know, because of the schedule. Oh, you know, because of jet lag. Oh, you know, because it was a busy week. Oh, you know, Mondays is really difficult because after Sunday we are so tired. I ask, I ask you, did you talk to your wife on Monday? Did you talk to your wife on Tuesday? Did you have time to watch a movie on Netflix on Tuesday? I'm never too tired. I'm never too busy. I'm never too caught up to spend time with my maker. It's, it's, it's a habit. It's not an event. It's a habit. They will, Jesus himself would often slip away. Psalm 5 verse 3. It says, my voice you will hear in the morning. Now we all came from different places. But he heard my voice this morning. I don't know if he heard your voice this morning. But David says, my voice you will hear in the morning, oh God. And in the morning I will direct my prayer to you. And I will look up. I'm tired of looking down. I'm tired. You know when you look down, you see men. When you look up, you see God. He says, my voice, you will hear me in the morning, Lord. Oh, he heard my voice this morning. Did he hear a voice? We all came. We all chat. We all have meetings. We all eat. Some people have been to Chinese restaurants. Some people have had some carbonara. Some people have had some sausages this morning. Some people have had some French toast this morning. And that's fine. But some of us, our voices have been heard in the heavens this morning. My voice you hear in the morning, oh God. And in the morning, I'll direct my prayer to you. And I will look up. My friends, stop looking at, to man to help you. Stop looking to man to fulfill and to satisfy you. And start looking up to heaven. And start looking up to God. Every morning, we spend time with him. He would often slip away. He would often slip away. Come away. There was a song we used to sing in church. It, it said, come away. Come away. Come and spend some time with me. Come away. You know, I, I tell you, slipping away. You know, that's why people go on a honeymoon when they get married. Because they want to express themselves in a way they can't express themselves when there are people around. There's a difference between a wedding ceremony and a honeymoon. Sunday church is beautiful. It's a wedding ceremony. But the honeymoon, the honeymoon is when we're alone. It's a habit. You know, when you don't spend time with the Lord every day, the flesh takes over. You know, what does the Bible say in 1 Corinthians 2.14? It says the natural man, he can't receive the things of God. Now, what are the things of God? 
They can't receive the guidance of God. All through your day, you have no guidance from God because you are in your natural state. The natural man, look at it. The normal guy. Give me ESV. Let's see if it's easier. The normal person. The natural person cannot accept the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness to him. He's not able to understand them because it takes a spiritual man to discern or to understand them. And so, you, you find people unable to hear or receive anything from God because they are in their natural state. And you know, that's what leads to sin. That, that, that's an age-old question. Can sin be overcome? Is it possible for sin to be overcome? Because, and that's what I was sharing with you, I think on Friday, from Romans chapter 6, verse 11, when it says, reckon yourselves to be dead in the Amplified, um, but alive to God. But it, it talks about unbroken fellowship. Can you give me the Amplified, AMP? Give me the Amplified. Oh, this is precious. Amplified. It says, we overcome sin through unbroken fellowship with God. See if you can find it for me. Amplified. Romans 6, verse 11. Unbroken fellowship. When fellowship is broken, the flesh takes over. Oh, there we are. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin. How many of you want to die to sin? Yeah, Lord, I want, I want to die to the flesh. But I tell you, you know, today the Lord heard my voice, but tomorrow sin is going to have dominion over me again. Yeah, there's the power of sin. There's the presence of sin. The power of sin is overcome by daily fellowship with God. The power of sin is overcome at salvation, sorry. But the presence of sin is there waiting waiting to take over if you don't spend time with the Lord so sin always has dominion over you but when you learn to spend time with God look at it, it says you are dead to sin but alive to God, how? in unbroken fellowship the power is in the habit if you, wait, if you spend time with God on Monday but you don't spend time with God on Tuesday and Wednesday or this week or next month or four times in a year it's broken fellowship and you know, in my experience, working with the Lord, it takes, you know, it, when, you, when you go two days, three days, a week, a month, six months without spending time with God, it takes, it can take you weeks to recover from breaking fellowship with God. Look, since we're an amplified, can you go to Joel chapter 2 verse 12? Joel chapter 2 verse 12. Stay in Amplified if you can. And I'll show you. Joel chapter 2 verse 12. Okay. They that wait on the Lord. We are waiting. We are patient. For you to help us. Joel chapter 2 verse 12. Good. Even now, says the Lord. Turn and come to me. Everyone say, turn and come to me. With all your heart in genuine repentance. Now look at this. With fasting and weeping and mourning. Listen, until every barrier is removed and the broken fellowship, the broken fellowship is restored. Broken fellowship is restored by coming to God over and over again until, it says, until. When, 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 when you break in spending time with God, a week, three weeks, those of you who have been, you've, God has not heard your voice this morning. It's not going to be like, oh, tomorrow, I'm, no, it's going to take you some days. It's gonna, you're going to have dry experiences because it's not a habit. But every day, I tell you, try it. Lock yourself in a room for a few, for a few minutes, for an hour. Worship the Lord. Read his word. Pray. Ask him to speak to your heart. Your whole day looks different. But when you don't, you are in your natural state. The flesh is taken over. Sin is taken over. What did Paul say? He says, I keep my body under. How do you keep your body under? By every day putting the body back down. The body is like a football in a swimming pool. It's always trying to come up. Have you ever tried to put 
a football, a ball, something with air in it, underwater. It's always trying to come back up. So every morning you push it back down by spending time with the Lord. Unbroken fellowship. I pray you have habitual unbroken fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Paul says, though my outward man is perishing, the inward man is renewed day by day. Day by day. What does the Bible say? Proverbs chapter 8 verse 34. Blessed is the man who is at my gates daily. The blessing is when it's daily. It's the most important habit of your life. Jesus would often slip away. Oh, look at this. Blessed is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates and waiting beside my doors. May you have the blessing of daily fellowship with Jesus Christ. May you speak to Jesus every day. May God touch your heart and draw you to him. May you receive the grace. I pray for the grace to seek God every day. You know, the scripture speaks about the spirit of grace and supplication. It's, it's the help of God to seek him. The grace of God to pray and to spend time with him. When you don't spend time with God, every day, you start to change. And you don't notice you're changing. You start to become more fleshly. You know, your character starts to change. Do you remember Galatians chapter 5? When the Bible talks about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace. Is there still love in your life? Is there still peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, humility, gentleness, self-control? Now, these things are called... Uh, put those two scriptures together if you can they are called the fruits of the Holy Spirit now my wife and I we have fruits two of them their names are Amy and Jamie they are our two babies they are our fruit they are the fruit they are my, they are my offspring my fruit now my wife was carrying my fruit for nine months are you with me COP I think you understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I think you, you, you're old enough. She carried my fruit. Now, how did she develop my fruit in her? Do you think we developed it when everybody was around? It's when we're alone. How do you develop the fruits of the Holy Spirit? You don't develop it when everybody's around. It takes deep intimacy and fellowship with the holy spirit to bring love to bring forth joy to bring forth gentleness to bring forth peace receive the peace of god receive the love the joy that only god can bring you know god is mysterious jesus told the disciples in this world you're going to have troubles but in me you'll have peace do you know what that means? Jesus doesn't solve the trouble we are in. He won't take you out of the valley of the shadow of death, but he'll be with you. He won't take you out of trouble. He'll bring you peace. He'll bring you joy. And people will say, why are you smiling? Look at all, look all that's happening in your life. Why are you smiling? And you say, because I have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Because I was with him this morning. And I was with him yesterday and i'll be with him tomorrow and next week thursday he'll hear my voice and next week saturday you hear my voice when you have your quiet time you develop the most important personal habit of your life some of us have the habit of biting our nails some people have the habit of pulling out your hair some people have the habit of eating dunkin donuts every morning okay there are some sinners in the room but today God is giving you, you know, I tell you, those are some serious habits. When I worked at the bank, I had a habit of drinking three cups of coffee every day. And I used to drink it black, and I preferred Colombian, something from South America. Strong black coffee, three times a day. That was my habit. Food becomes a habit easily. I knew people who used to have, um, do they still do McDonald's breakfast? I haven't seen that in a while. They still do. 
Yeah, people used to have the egg and bacon McMuffin every single day because meals become habits. And that's why Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. Your spirit, your spirit wants a McMuffin. Your spirit wants a spiritual coffee and it's found in the word of God. And Jesus said, give us today and give us tomorrow and give us the day after. And that's why the manna that came from heaven, the Bible says, if they kept it by the next day, it was stale. What God said to you yesterday is old today. And every morning he has something new for you. Every morning he wants, to, he wants to bless your soul and fill your life and fill your heart. And so he sends his daily bread. God doesn't give us weekly bread. God doesn't give us monthly bread. God gives us daily bread. Daily bread. I want to see his face every day. I want to see his face every day. I, want to, I don't want to miss a day. Rust, rust starts to come up in your spirit when you have times away from the Lord. Rust. But I pray that the Holy Spirit will give you the grace to seek him. Lift your hands and close your eyes and say, Lord, give me the grace. Just pray for yourself for a few moments. Say, Lord, I want, I want it to be a habit. I don't want meeting you to be an event. I want it to be something I do daily. Just ask him, close your eyes and just whisper to him. Say, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, I, I can't do it without you. My flesh is so strong. My flesh is weak. Confess your sins. Say, Lord, it's been, it's been a while since I've spent some time with you. But today I want to come back to you. Come back to following you and loving you and, and meeting you every day. And meeting you every day. And seeing your face every day. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Next, during your quiet time, you read the most important book in the world. The most important book in the world. Now, I, when I was in secondary school, I did, I studied biology, I studied physics. I studied chemistry, I studied further mathematics, uh, I studied social studies, I did some agriculture in primary school. When I got to university, I studied constitutional law, I studied equity and trust, I studied land law, I studied criminal law, I studied the law of torts, I studied contract law, I studied commercial law, I studied company law, I studied public international law, I studied sports law. I studied medical law. I studied, I, I studied a lot of books. I studied a lot of books. When I was young, my grandmother used to give me uh, history books. In my house, my parents never had a television. We only had a big, the whole wall was covered with shelves of books. So I've read history books. I read about almost all the kings of England all the way from Ethelstan to King Charles III. I've studied on uh, French history and the French Revolution and King Louis and uh, studied on Napoleon. And I've studied on the, the Spanish uh, 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 colony, colonies in South America. And I've read about the Civil War in America and the history of the American independence. And I've studied the history of the colonies in America. And I've studied uh, the history in Africa the Zulu kingdom and the Ashanti kingdom and the kingdom of Ghana and the kingdom of Mali. I've read about uh, the, the history of the First World War and the Second World War. And I've read a lot of books in my life. But I tell you, there's no book that tells us what happens when we die. Except the Bible. There's no book that tells us how to come close to God. Except the Bible. There's no book that explains to us how life works. Except the Bible. When we lose a loved one and we stand at, the, at the, the side of the grave as the body goes down into the hole, there's no book that gives us comfort like the scriptures. And the greatest book on earth is the Bible because the Bible is the only book that God himself authored. It was written by the Lord himself. And when you, when you spend time every morning 
with God. You read the most important book you'll ever read. Now, do you know that the, book you, the books you read determine the life, you, the life you live? My wife is a medical doctor, so she read medical books. I'm a lawyer, I read legal books. Based on the books we read, our professions were formed. And our futures were, in a sense, determined by what we read. And your future in God is determined by what you've read. Oh, yeah. And I want to I wanna tell you, I want to encourage you, reading the Bible will change your life. Now, I tell you, the Bible says, John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, the Bible itself is God. The Bible itself is God. The more you read the Bible, the more you know God. What did Jesus say in John 5? 38, I think. 39. John 5, 39, I think. It says, search the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. If you put that in ESV, it might be simpler. What Jesus was saying is, when you search the scriptures, you'll find me. God is in the pages of the Bible. That's how God speaks to us. You know, I have some people in my life, I'm one of them actually. I do better with phone calls than texts. Like I, I'm able to communicate better. Like when I text back and forth after some time, I just call. Some people are like that. But there's some people who like texting. They prefer to text because they have emojis and they have... Um, memes and they have stickers so they prefer to text god prefers to text god prefers to text you and his, his he texts you through the bible god prefers to send you written messages and he sends them to you through the bible search the scriptures they are bearing witness or they are telling you about me you will find god in the scriptures you will know who god is in the scriptures Reading the Bible will change how your mind works. What did the Lord tell Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8? He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate therein. Are you there? Meditation. Meditation. When you think on God's word, God will speak to you. If you have the time to sit alone, and open the Bible and think about what his word is saying. You know, this morning I was reading Exodus 33. And I was thinking about what God was saying. Oh, I, I never, I felt so full. I felt like I had had breakfast. Now some other people had breakfast. I, I didn't have breakfast. I've only had tea. Some people, their, their bodies ate. But their spirits are hungry. I didn't, I'm, not, I'm not attacking anyone here, but... Some people have had French toast. Some people have had pork tocino. <laughs> Some people have had omelets. But their spirits are hungry. But what does the Bible say? As newborn babes. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Meditation on God's word will bless your life meditate think deeply I can tell people who don't respect scripture they have no fear for God's word they don't take their instructions from God's word they do what they think they do what someone else tells them but they don't think according to God's word I believe that the manual for life is the Bible I believe that every problem you are going through has been written when you eat the sincere milk of the word your spirit man starts to grow. It's the only book that grows your spirit. I read physics books and chemistry books. My spirit man didn't grow. But when I read Ephesians, when I read Habakkuk, when I read Ezekiel, when I spend time in Genesis, my spirit man... You know, as I was um, sharing the, um, the offering thought, I, I was blessed when she said, God's blessings are not in your house. Oh, you see, that comes from meditation on the Word of God. When she said that, my spirit man came alive. You know, she, was, she said a lot of things. I don't remember most of them. But what she said, when, when, when she said, has that happened to you in church before? 
there was a there was a whole sermon the pastor preached a lot but there was something he said that stayed with your spirit yeah i just felt my spirit come alive I just said amen. It came out of me when she said, it's not in your house. There's a blessing that's not at home. There's a blessing that is not at work. There's a blessing and a provision that only happens when you come to the place where God is. I was blessed. That comes from meditation. Your spirit man grows. You know, in secondary school, back where I'm from, um, we got we got secondary school for three years before university. And when you come in as a first year, you really get bullied. Because we are really small and really confused. And those guys have been in school for two years. And so they, they, they call us to do work for them. They make us do all sorts of things. It's, a, it's, it's terrible, you know. And I remember there was a guy who was in, my, in our year. But he looked way older. And he had a lot of muscles. And so every time the older boys would come to bully us. They would chuck water on us in the night. They poured drinks on our faces, but they never touched him. He was too big and too scary. So sometimes they would shout, all first years, and he wouldn't move. He'd be lying there in his bed quietly and peacefully. And one day I asked him, you know they're calling us? He said, no, they're not talking to me, they're talking to you. He said, because I was too small. Now some of you have been wrestling with some demons because you are too small. Some of you have been wrestling with some evil spirits because you are too small. Some of you have been struggling with some addictions it's because you are too small. But when you drink the sincere milk of the word of God, your spirit man starts to grow and get stronger and your spirit man starts to overcome all the weaknesses and all the problems and all the evil spirits of your life. And during your quiet time, you read the only book that grows your spirit. When you spend time meditating on, on his word, we will never grow beyond that. Christianity will never grow beyond that. Spending time in God's word, meditating. And God told Joshua, for then, then, it's then that success and prosperity comes. Look, it says, for then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. May God bring prosperity, prosperity into your life, sorry. May God bring success into your life. May God bring wisdom into your life through his word. His word will guide you. His word is a light. You know, Psalm 119 verse 105, it says, Thy word is a light, a light unto my feet and a lamp to my path. There are two important things that come from the light. You know, I'll tell you a story. Don't tell anyone. Promise. COP, promise. Oh, I can't hear you. Promise. Okay, upstairs. I preach to just the choir upstairs because they like me. Promise, choir. Promise you won't tell anyone. Okay. When I, when I was uh, doing the bar, I moved into a new university to do my master's. And I lived in a, an apartment, a very small apartment in London. And I lived on the fourth floor. It was an old house. And uh, when I moved in, sometimes at night when I was sleeping, I would hear movement. In a small studio flat, I would hear some movement in the flat. But you know, it was, it was off a busy road, so I thought the cars passing by kind of maybe just shook the house a little or just, I don't know. So I wasn't sure what I was dealing with. But one day, I bought KFC, okay? And I, I put the KFC on the table and I was about to bite into the KFC and I had a delivery downstairs. So I put the piece of chicken down. I never bit it, I put it down. And then I, I ran downstairs to get the delivery and I came back and when I came back there was a bite there was a bite in my KFC now I wasn't sure whether I bit you know as the, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if I bit the KFC before I went downstairs or I didn't and I wasn't I thought you know maybe an angel visited me today I don't know so I just I threw away that piece of chicken I didn't, I didn't want to 
I don't know if I bit it or I didn't. I hope I didn't. Uh, yeah. I don't remember. I actually don't remember. But I remember being confused. Now, that night, I went to bed. And I left the KFC. On, it was a studio flat. So the kitchen and everything is in one little room. So I left the bucket or the box. The, you know the boxes they come in. On the top of the kitchen cabinet. And I heard noise again so I turned on the light there was a switch next to my bed and I saw maybe about 15 rats maybe at least 15 maybe more climbing fat well fed obviously they've been eating a lot of <laughs> as soon as I turned the lights and I you know I tell you, I know you're not going to believe me, but when I turn on the lights, they all turn to look at me. I promise. I promise you. They all turned and looked at me. And when the light came on, after they looked at me, guess what they did? Every rat ran away and disappeared. Do you know why? Because evil spirits don't like light. And every evil spirit in your life that has crowded your life and crowded your home, when you turn on the light of God's word, they all run away. The Bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. The darkness cannot fight it. You spend too much time complaining about what you're going through and complaining about what's going on in your life and complaining about things that don't ever change. It's time to turn on the lights. I didn't have a fight with the rats. I didn't call an exterminator. I just turned on the lights and all the rats disappeared. And by the way, I packed my things and left the flat that night and never came back. <laughs> the light of God's word will suck every evil spirit in your life. The light will shine in the darkness and the darkness will not comprehend it. The second thing light does is it prevents hurts and pain in your life. Have you ever hit your toe on a door? Oh my goodness. That happened to me yesterday actually. I was on the phone and I hit my toe. On the, has, has that happened to you before? You're walking in the night and you can't see where you're going and it's in between your toes on the door. Has that happened to you before? Yes. Have you fallen down in the dark before? I've tripped, I've tripped, I've tripped before in the, in the dark and fallen down. Because it was dark and I couldn't see. I've fallen flat on my face. You keep hurting yourself because there's darkness. But when you open God's word, he shines his light in your life. That's why, you, that's why you've been through so many. You're on your seventh relationship. Your heart has been broken seven times. You become like Humpty Dumpty. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put your heart back together again. Which, by the way, that, that uh, poem makes no sense because if, if an egg is spoiled, the last people I want to se send are the king's horses. The hoofs of the horses are the worst. I mean, I don't know how they help. But your heart has been broken so many times. Ooh. You've made so many investments in your business that have brought disappointment and sadness because there was no light to show you where you are going to show you where to walk, to show you what decisions to make. But when you open God's word, his light will shine on your life and he'll show you where to go. And so I pray for you that God will help you to seek him every day. And open, you know, people think that there's guidance when you watch the news. People say, I'm going to read Elon Musk's uh, autobiography to get some guidance. People say, I'm going to a webinar. I have a webinar with Bill Gates. People say, I'm meeting Richard Branson. Uh, he's given us wealth tips. I'll tell you something. The greatest wealth tips in the world come from the, the Word of God. The greatest guidance for marriage it comes from the Word of God. I'll tell you the greatest guidance to find God, it comes from the Word of God. The greatest guidance in business comes from the Word of God. The greatest guidance in Manila, it comes from the Word of God. The greatest economic policy in the world comes from the Word of God. He sent His Word and He healed all their diseases. The greatest medicine in the world, it comes from the Word of God. And when you open his word, your life changes. And so I pray that the Holy Spirit will fill your heart with a desire to read God's word and to know him. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everyone said...
God bless you. Stand to your feet. I pray that God has spoken to you. How many of you want to spend time alone with God? Daily. The most important personal habit. How many of you have had breakfast today? Raise your hand. Confess. Confess. How many have had breakfast? How many of you, your spirit man has not had breakfast? Raise your hand. May God have mercy on your soul. Amen. Lift your hands. Let's pray. The grace to seek him. The grace to know him. You're worthy of it all. Help me choir. Let's sing. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Come on, lift your hands. Tell the Lord you're worthy. You're worthy of it all. To you are you deserve the glory. Come on, COP, lift your hands and tell the Lord, You're worthy. You're worthy of my praise. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy of the all. For from you, for from you are. Lift your hands, sing one more time. You're worthy of it all. Come on, close your eyes and tell God how worthy he is of your praise and your love and your adoration. For from him come all things. We are complete in him. All things come from him. All things come from him. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory, you deserve the glory. You're worthy of it all. Lord, you're worthy of it all. Lord, you're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Please bow your heads with me. Close your eyes. We are in the presence of the Lord. Before we sit down, there are some people here I need to pray with. People who are far from God. You know the Bible says he who has the son has life and he who has not the son has not life if you don't know Jesus I don't mean you've come to church a few times or you've heard his name mentioned before but in your heart you don't know him personally if you don't know that you know that you know in your heart but you're going to heaven that you belong to Jesus that you have a new life then going home today without taking a decision is very dangerous. Because the Bible says we have one chance to live and after that there's judgment. Nobody really knows when it all ends and when is the last day. And so today God has drawn you to his house. The Bible says no one can come to the Father except God himself draws you. There's no way you would be in church today if God himself hadn't drawn, orchestrated and planned for you to be here. And you stand here in his house because he wanted you to hear what I'm saying. He wanted you to hear what he is saying. He's calling you to come to him. To turn your life over to him. You say, Pastor, but how? 
You don't know my life. It's difficult. I, I don't know if you understand who I am and what I've been through and what I am and what I've done. Yes, I don't understand, but God knows you. The Bible tells us he knows the hairs on our head. He knows your name. He knows where you live. He knows your family. And he brought you here today so you would have a chance to surrender your life to him. There are many people in this room who were just like you once. And they came to a service just like this and they took a decision to follow Jesus. And today it's your turn. It's your turn to make peace with God. He'll turn your life around. Pastor, how? You don't need to understand. God will do it. He'll come into your heart and he'll turn your life around. And if you're here today, you want to say, Pastor, I'm one of those people. I've heard about Jesus. I've, I've come to church. I've gone to church services here and there, but I, I've never really come to know him personally. If I die today, I, I'm not sure how my judgment would go. And I just want to be sure before I go home. Please pray with me, Pastor. I want to take a decision for Jesus. Everybody close your eyes, bow your heads. No movement, please. If you're here like that, I want you to lift up your right hand. Your right hand, high above your head. Pastor, I'm one of those people. Would you please pray with me? Yes, I see your hands. High above your head. Nothing to be shy of. Don't be shy. Don't worry about who's watching or who you're standing next to. All of us took the decision you're taking now. Everyone who's a Christian in here, everyone who got saved, they took a decision just like you. They lifted up their right hand. They didn't care who was watching. They didn't care who was looking. They lifted up their hands and they gave their hearts to Jesus. I see hands lifted. There are some more people. Just put your hand up. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. Don't fight God. Don't say no to God. Don't say I'm shy. Don't say I'm worried. Don't say I don't know who's watching. Don't say I'm not ready. Don't say I'm not prepared. Just lift up your hand and say, Jesus, I surrender to you. And if you've lifted up your hand, I want you to do one more thing. I want you to leave where you're standing. Pick up the stuff you came with, your bag, your jacket, your clothes, your, your, your phone. And I want you to walk all the way to where I'm standing because I want to pray with you. If your right hand is lifted, please leave your seat and walk towards me. I would like to pray with you. My brother at the back, you can come to me. My sister at the back, you lifted your hand. I want you to leave your seat and come all the way to me. I want to pray with you. God is going to change your life. Come all the way. Come all the way. Come all the way. Come. Keep clapping for them as they come. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Come all the way. Come all the way. You're worthy of it all. If you lifted your hand, I want to encourage you to leave your seat and come. My brother, God is calling you. Come. My sister, Jesus wants to change your life. Come all the way. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Come on. One last time. Let's sing. You're worthy of it all. Yeah.